I'm Dave from boynaband.com, and today we'll take a look at Absynth, a synth that comes in the complete seven package from Native Instruments. Features and versatility. Now I've only really started to use it recently, but Absynth is a lot of fun to use. The features allow for some really cool interactive waveform generation methods, particularly the wave section here, which allows you to draw your own waveform. which is really fun to play with and can actually get some cool results, though it's difficult to get something quite as good as the sample waves that are already in there. Spectrum mode here is similar, allowing you to draw the spectrum in a series of bars that define the tonal quality. As you could hear, that high end started to peak as I drew that in. And if we take a look at the three oscillators in patch mode, there's one, two, three, ABC rather, you can select a bunch of different types of sound sources. Okay, I'll show you by loading up a new sound. We've got single, if we uh, put it on something with a bit of harmonics to it. Yeah, a sawtooth. Single, just one oscillator, double. For two oscillators, you can see that the mod and uni unison values are different here. FM and ring modulation for some weirder sounds. Fractalize mode where apparently the selective waveform is copied to itself. Not entirely sure what that means, but it kind of sounds like a unison effect. Granular and sync granular options, which divides a waveform into grains, which you can manipulate. So if I load up synth, analog synth, and start modifying the time, The stretching can give some really nice deep sounds without losing too much of that power that's good to keep. And then there's sample mode, which is essentially just a sampler. And it even has this audio in for live use. As you can see, it's really versatile. There's a whole load of ways to manipulate the sound even at this stage. You can alter the hertz ratio, etc. here in the oscillator. And it's good to have a filter and a modifier for each oscillator, as well as these master effects. Now the effects section, if we turn it on, is quite big in itself, allowing another bunch of alterations to take place. Some more conventional, you've got this multi-tap delay and echoes, but other ones such as this etherizer, which if we turn that on, turn down the dry, so you can really hear it, this one splits the sound into grains, filters the crap out of them, and then pans them all over the place. I love innovative combinations of effects like that, especially when they're presented in such an accessible fashion. You can really mold your sounds in Absinthe, and quite easily and playfully as well, as we'll notice when we talk about the mutate function later on. Usability. Okay, I think now counts as later on, so let's talk about the mutate function. Have you ever had one of those moments when you just don't have the inspiration for a specific sound, or when you can't quite get what you're looking for when you're making a synth patch? The mutate button is the closest thing you're going to get to an inspiration generator. You go to the browser, pick the kind of sound you want it to be like, so synth, cold, lead, for instance, and then Absinthe automagically vaguely directs your synth towards that descriptive factor, depending on the common parameters of all the synths in this list. You can get some very varied effects. Sometimes it's hilarious, other times pointless, other times awesome. I'd say in about almost equal parts. Let's see what we get here from this to this. Okay, that's a bit colder and more of a lead synth. Nice big lead synth now. We take it up on my keyboard. Okay, so it's not doing vast amounts, just chucking on a bunch of delay in that instance, but other occasions you can get some really nice sounds. It is a great alternative to using just a preset, since you know there's very little chance someone will have randomly come across the same exact combination of parameters, especially with the amount that's on offer in Absinthe as you've seen. 
And while we're here, you can once again see we've got this brilliant browser that specifies loads of different oral factors, just like in Massive. I really hope more synth manufacturers start using this tagging system, as it's infinitely more useful than a big list. Usability-wise, as a general rule, it is quite complex for a newbie. For instance, as you saw, you've got loads of different options here, and here, and here, and here and here and here and here and bleh, everywhere. So I'd look elsewhere if you're looking for a my first synth kind of synth. But for someone with a reasonable understanding of different types of synthesis, you should be in heaven. There's a few bits and bobs that will be new and exciting, some familiar, more conventional stuff, and the depth is awesome for refining those sounds into exactly what you want. It's unfortunate that the majority of Absinthe is a bit complex for newbies, since there are parts which are really good, such as this envelope section here. If we take a listen to the sound we've got, or get a new one. This one will do. You can see here, it shows in the envelope where the sound is in real time and usefully where the synth is in the envelope at that point. So if we hold it down, stays at the sustain. Then if we let go, you can see the release. To me, that's probably the best way to teach someone how an ADSR envelope works ever. Because you can simply alter them as well. and see how that changes the sound. Quality. As usual, I think quality is best shown with some presets, so let's take a look at a few of the sounds. I really like the potential this deceptively deep synth has. It may look a bit cartoony with its off-center oscillators and bold blue design, but the sounds are anything but childish. Overall, Absinthe is fantastic for anything from deep, dirty, gritty harmonic sounds to uplifting, shiny, smooth ones, and everything in between. It is pretty accessible to those who have a grounding in synthesis, and helps teach you a bit about waveforms as well. This is one of those synths I imagine you'd move up to once you'd got the hang of the basics and something a bit less in-depth. I hope you've enjoyed this week's worth of reviews on Contact 7, and if you want me to review anything else, let me know in the boinaband.com forum at boinaband.com slash forum in the suggestion box. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Have a nice day! Well, I won't actually see you, but have a nice day! If you found this video useful, like it and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest Boy in a Band videos. You can follow me on Twitter at Dave P. Brown. And if you want to improve your production skills, head over to the Boy in a Band forum at boyinaband.com slash forum and sign up so you can share your songs, get new fans and valuable advice on how to improve your productions. Links for that in the description. Cheers for watching and have a nice day. Delicious toffee cheesecake. Mmm.